Good afternoon and welcome to Mary Local High School and the gym we fondly know as the hangar where this afternoon WSN brings you a non-conference girls basketball game. The Wapakana Redskins are in town to play the Mary Local Flyers. My name is Mark Schein. My players do play by play alongside your color commentary, Mr. John Zerby. John, we got a two and three Wapak. We got a five and one Mary Local on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I love Saturday afternoon games. Girls gives them an opportunity to play on the weekend and in front of a home crowd here at Marion Local. And, uh, you know, Walpock is a young team, the new coach, and trying to get on their feet here. And Marion Local is experienced and looking to have a great season. You've got some keys to the game scrawled in front of you there. How about some keys to the game? Yeah, let's start with the visiting Walpock Redskins. The biggest thing they're going to have to do, especially being a young team, like we said, is just limiting turnovers, making sure they protect the basketball and, and can uh, give, a, give an opportunity to, to score today without uh, giving turnovers and also limiting second chance opportunities, getting rebounds, getting out in transition and winning those 50-50 balls. I think, you know, if they can give that effort and uh, win those 50-50 balls, they have a, a great opportunity. And finally, just execute. I and mean, when you can execute and run your system and, and run your plays, uh, that gives you a great opportunity to, to be in the ball game. And how about the Marion local Flyers then? Yeah, the Flyers are going to get after you defensively, and so they want to play great pressure defense. Uh, you're going to see their aggressiveness here. Um, and and offensively just move the ball. They want to get the ball, move it around, and make sure they're efficient. And then finally, just rebounding, making sure that they're on the boards, that they're attacking the boards, and that they're communicating with each other. Wapakana well, is in red today. Number two, Elizabeth Good. Number 15, Kira Seifring. 22 is Courtney Follenkamp. 33 is Reagan Quarter. And 45 is Madison Springer. For the home team, number 10 is Ava Unrest. Number 12 is Stella Hillsman. 24, Chloe Ronerbaum. 30 is Lindsey Koenig. And 52 is Hannah Rose. Our officials today, Seth Middleton. Middleton, Aza Donaldson, and Adam Bell, and the opening tip goes to the Flyers. Look inside, trying to find somebody is Chloe Ronebaum, but she finally passes it out front. She finds um, Sally Hillsman, and Hillsman sets it up as she finds Ava Unrest. Ava's a sophomore guard. A little trap on the side. Lamb, we're going to get our first foul of the basketball game. That will go against Elizabeth Good. Well, I like the aggressiveness that Walpock's coming out with in their man-to-man -man defense, immediately trying to establish that pressure. And against a, a really good team like Marion Local, it's, uh, it's good to come out with that aggressiveness early. Hannah Rose throws the ball into the backcourt to Ava Unrest, and they will reset. Pass to the wing again. This is Rose. Pass down inside. That will go to Ronebaum, and her shot will bounce around and not go. The rebound comes down to Reagan Quarter, and here comes Wapak Canetta. Good, and lost it out of bounds, but it's tipped out of bounds by Stella Hillsman. Well, rebounding is going to be a key for Walpock tonight. They're going to have to make sure they box out. That time only giving Marion Local one opportunity is, is going to be key for them to have these uh, to have quality possessions here. It was good. Lobs it out on top where it's tipped around. Ends up in the hands of Hannah Rose, who traveled with the basketball. Elizabeth Good is the leading scorer for the Wapakoneta Redskins. They average 38.4 a game. They give up 45.6. Elizabeth averages 13 points a game. There's a pass inside. This goes to quarter. Reagan looks, and she finds Mad Madison Springer. And they reset to Good on top. Mary Local averages 42.8 per game. We've got a scramble for the loose ball. It goes out of bounds off of Mary Local. They average 42.8 a game. They give up 37.8. Pretty balanced scoring for them. Ava Unrest is their leading score at 10.8, and that's followed by Lindsey Koenig at 10 a game. You see Ava Unrest already playing that aggressive defense, almost getting that turnover early. Here's Good in the corner with it. Spins baseline, loses her balance, and here's a cross-court pass. Short jumper will roll in and fall for Courtney Fullenkamp. That was a nice shot by Fullenkamp right there uh, on the side of the basket there, and get that to fall and gives the Redskins a quicker lead here. A little 1-3-1 trap. Pass inside, power move up in the basket. That will go to Lindsey Koenig. Yeah, Lindsey Koenig has been a solid staple here at Marion Local for many years and uh, did a nice job inside. Here's quarter to advance the basketball. And they reset to good. Seifring, Kira looking for somebody to pass to. And saved on the sideline by good. Penetration dribble, short runner, bounces around and won't go. The rebound comes to Ava Unrest, and she pushes. Good steal by Quarter that time as she bounced the basketball to Madison Springer and saves it. Here's Reagan. 
Right to the rim with a left hand, and we'll draw a foul. Well, it's story time, John. Talk to Reagan Quarter's mom before the game started. She keeps scorebook here for Wapakoneta. Her brother Jackson is a twin brother, and he is the best player, perhaps, of Wapakoneta's boys team. And they are both named after presidents, Reagan and Brother Jackson. <laughs> well, I'm glad they picked some good presidents yeah, as well. That, and, uh, yeah. uh, two of my favorites for sure, but uh, uh, that's, a, that's a fun way to, to a fun story for them to share as well. And I'm sure that uh, they're having a lot of fun right now following both boys and girls teams. A lot of basketball in that family right now. And she splashes both of those free throws. It's 4-2 early on. Here comes some pressure. And Flyers beat the pressure. And this will be unrest to set the offense. Rose. Here's pass inside, a little power move inside, and that will go for Lindsay Koenig. She's got all four flyer points. Well, she's doing a good job of getting good position, and they're finding her, and she's skilled enough inside to, to really uh, use good technique and fundamentals and use the backboard as well. Quarter carried the basketball, trying to go off a screen. That will be a turnover. Well, and that's her second turnover of the game, Mark, and I know that's one of the keys is to try to limit those turnovers, um, especially this early. They want to make sure that they can establish some kind of offensive set. Unrest. And she finds Rose. Jump shot goes off the backboard by Hillsman and put up. That doesn't finish. Battle inside. And who's it go off of? It goes off of I think Madison Springer will stay with, oh, off a white jersey. Good job by Marion Local of getting those offensive rebounds and those second opportunities just couldn't convert. Quarter, there's some point guard activity right here. Ball stolen, headed to the rim this time will be Hillsman. And she backs it up, here's unrest. Ava goes up from 10 feet and scores. Yeah, and you can tell right away, Ava Unrest only being a sophomore, being kind of the key to what Marion Local does. And, not only aggressive on defense, but she really is the centerpiece of their offense, too. Finally getting the ball over midcourt is Courtney Follenkamp under good pressure. And back to Follenkamp. Springer in the corner. Ball's tipped away and Tried to find Riley Zeslowski on the far side, as she has checked in a moment ago. That will be a turnover, and Hannah Rose will inbound the basketball. Almost halfway through opening quarter. Oh, we're going to turn it around. Somebody tipped it out of bounds. That will bring Good back into the game. Here's Elizabeth, and she will take quarter's place. Well, and I think one of the things you immediately can see is that Marion Local, a lot of their points are going to come off of their defensive pressure. I mean, you can see right there, yes. Ava Unrass playing aggressive pressure defense, and I'm sure this is one of the reasons why Walpock wants to limit turnovers today. Ava's a sophomore along with Chloe Ronenbaum in the starting lineup and three seniors. Good goes to the rim and missed a shot. Springer rebounds. And she goes back up and she will draw a foul. Let's see who that goes against. That will go against Lindsey Koenig. Her first team second into the free throw line goes Madison Springer. Yeah, Madison Springer did a good job of getting that offensive rebound and immediately putting the ball up and, and drawing a foul and now getting a chance at some foul shots here. She does. Our premier sponsor today is Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. And we get a hold on the rebound. The ball was secured by Stella Hillsman, and she was fouled by Kiera Seifre. Each team has two fouls now. There's Unrath. She finds Rose on the wing. Rotterbaum goes up for a shot. That's banged out of bounds by Unrest, but she did so by knocking it off of Riley Zaslowski. Yeah, Riley Zaslowski did a great job of uh, uh, boxing out and just uh, making a play. Just the ball got knocked out of bounds, and uh, fortunately, Marion Local was able to retain possession. And there's a nice move to the goal. There's Ava Unrest with her points three and four. 
does such a nice job of handling the ball. And uh, I love when high school basketball players use the backboard, Mark. And what do we get? We get a double dribble situation, and that will bring in a couple of subs. Number four, Jenna Kanapke, 5'6", senior. And Eckstein came in. That's Nora. She wears number 14. She's a 5'9", junior. And I need to recheck my notes, John. It's Zeligowski. I had to work on that pronunciation some beforehand. <laughs> I hope we got it right now, and I apologize to Riley. Well, we're both we're both teachers, Mark. We know how that is the first uh, day of school, going yeah, through the, the roster. Yeah. <laughs> so we, hopefully she'll give us a, a break on on that first one there. Here's Koenig on the sideline. Unrest will reset the offense. We're under three in the opening quarter. Patient possession this time. This is Kanapke who just entered a moment ago. Putting five on the perimeter, doing a little pass and cut stuff. Here's a flash cut by Rose. But she's covered up inside. The Stribe in her eighth year at Mary Local, directing traffic from the sideline. Here comes Quarter back in the game along with Amber Snipple. Amber's first appearance. She's a 5 a 6 a senior wearing number 10. Yeah, I've been impressed with Walpock's defense and, and just their, their effort so far. Uh, just really getting after it and uh, giving Marion Local all that they can handle early on. There's a pass inside to Koenig, but it's tipped away. And it is secured by Zeligowski. Here's Quarter. 8-5 Flyers early on. This is Schnipple checked in just a moment ago, and that ball is bounced out of bounds off a leg. That will allow Allison Dirksten will enter. She wears number 34, and then Hillsman re-enters. That was a kick mark, and I learned something very important watching an important uh, announcer this week on WSN about when you kick a ball, they have to intend to kick. Yeah, it's that's just correct. The, the, it's not a it's not a kick unless it's they a, intend to kick it. So, yep. great job because you know I was watching that episode this week. <laughs> it just bounced it off a leg, and that's okay. Here's Unrest picks up that foul into the free throw line. We'll go Courtney Fullencamp. She's got a basket already. And missed that free throw. Her team is uh, two for uh, three for four at the line, three for five at the line. One, I think it's going to be important for Walpock to, in any game, it's important to hit free throws, but to, to try to, to have a high percentage of free throws because they're going to need every point they can possibly get today. They've made half of their six here in the opening quarter. Flyers with an 8 5 lead. Trying to win their sixth game in a row is. Marion Local, after an opening season loss to a very good Bryan team at the Bath Tournament. Here's a pass down inside and a nice move that will go up by Allison Dirksen. She draws contact from Courtney Fullencamp and will go to the free throw line. Allison's a 50% free throw shooter on the season. Yeah, I thought Courtney Fullencamp had some had really good defense, uh, especially uh, body was in a good position, had her hands up, but. Must have just used a little too much body and, and drew that foul. Chloe Rodenbaum re-enters. And, you know, John, I wanted to throw a prop out to both coaches. They played Thursday night and still got stats to us this weekend. And uh, it's a quick turnaround for coaches. We know how busy they are. Really appreciate that. Second free throw does it go. It's a 9-5 lead for the home team. Yeah, most of these coaches work full-time jobs, too, so it's not like they're just coaching basketball. We appreciate them uh, taking the time to get us those stats. This was good trying to make a move to the goal, and she will be fouled. That foul goes to Jenna Kanapke's first. And Good will shoot a couple of free throws here. The leading score at 13 a game. Yeah, I've been. I've, I've liked her. Uh, her not only her aggressiveness, but she brings some energy to the Walpock Redskins. You can see that uh, her effort is kind of uh, is kind of allowing others to, to try to match that. So she's really bringing a lot of energy to her team right now. Elizabeth's a 5'9 junior. Hannah Prine, who wears number 21, checks into the game. Hannah's a 5'11 senior. Both coaches going to their benches rather liberally here in the opening quarter. Splashed them both. Cuts the lead to two. And there's not a press after this particular free throw like some of the other ones today. 
Here's Kanapke. She throws it on top. Nice ball fake and a good move and a good basket. That was a really nice play by Stella Hillsman. Yeah, Hillsman did just the fundamental thing of pump faking, uh, driving, and taking a great shot and then knocking it down, which is the most important thing. Uh, how often do we talk about the mid-range game isn't there anymore, John? It certainly was right that time. Here's Good to the rim again, and that will draw another foul. Elizabeth Good's just done a good job of trying to get to the basket and, like you said, drawing those fouls. And not only drawing fouls early, but, you know, before they hit the bonus, she's getting to the free throw line, which is, is critical right now. Allison Dirksen picked up that foul, her first. Three free throws in a row, Elizabeth Good. Under a minute to go here in our opening quarter. And splice that one as well. Those are dead center free throws. Here comes number 11 into the basketball game. That's Georgia Schrader. She becomes the ninth Redskin to play in the opening quarter. This will be Chloe Ronenbaum who moves to the point guard now with unrest on the bench. There's that same move, this time it'll go all the way to the goal, and that time overshot it. Who hit it out of bounds? It will go to the red team. Yeah, Stella Holzman did a good job of uh, pump faking again, and I love it when a, a player will use their left hand, and just gave it a little too much, but just a great fundamental play, and you can tell that she's worked on that quite a bit. Redskins trying to even this one up before we head to the opening quarter break. Here's good. There's a three ball that'll go up from Schnipple. That bounces around. Nice check out inside. The rebound goes to Eckstein. See if the Flyers choose to play last shot as that's what Coach Stribe is getting to her team about. Nope, got a good look. Instead takes it, and that rebound will go inside a quarter. So now the Redskins can play last shot. Good. It's a screen on top. This time she can't get loose, takes a three, bounces off the back rim. Opening eight minutes in the books with Flyers 11, Redskins 9. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the hangar here at Maria Stein, where our scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, and they're hiring. You can visit jobs.criver.com and apply today. 11-9, maybe the best stat of all for the opening quarter. Wapak in shot, 10 free throws, made seven of them, getting them in foul trouble, perhaps. Doing a great job of getting to the basket and drawing those fouls and being patient offensively, not just taking the first open look that they have, but working it inside and, and trying to get those effective shots. Here's good. She had four made free throws in the opening quarter to lead the Redskins in scoring. Four points for Lindsey Koenig, four for Ava Unrest. That ball is short. And the rebound comes to Chloe Ronenbaum, and she loses it. Here's quarter. Good for three. Got a good rotation on the basketball that time, but a really strong rebound inside by Allison Dirksen. She's missed the last few of those, but you have to think some of them are going to yeah. fall. What a great uh, uh, shot that she has. Here's Kanapke in the corner, lobs it inside. Dirksen goes off glass, and quarter hits it out of bounds. John, you did a lot of football for us this year. <laughs> Two pretty good football programs with Wapak and Marion Local. Yeah, both made it really good playoff runs. And I was kind of laughing because talking to Dan Koenig, AD here at Marion Local, you know, basketball season for most ADs is an extremely busy time of year. Well, Dan's getting a break now with basketball season because <laughs> yeah. he's also the defensive coordinator here for football. And, uh, you know, he's probably happy to see basketball season roll around. But, uh, yeah, it was fun to follow both these teams and call a lot of their games. And, you know, as much as many games as you do, Mark, you, you, you kind of yeah. start to, you know the players, you know the coaches, you root for the teams. It was fun to see them have great seasons. I, I really appreciated what Coach Goodwin said in his post-game conference after winning the championship. We, we try to get perfection on every every day. And I thought, that's what, isn't that what coaching is all about? Absolutely. He, he mentioned it's hard to do. You, you, you can't get there, but your goal is to be to get perfect every day. I thought that was a really good comment. He also mentioned that he'd love the competition. You yes. know, a lot of coaches like to win by a lot. 
you know, he kind of thrives on that competition. And, you know, that's uh, something that I think's lost in our days. Uh, you know, teams, they don't want to compete. They don't want to feel that pressure of, of playing in a tight game. And I love that comment as well. How, how do you win? 13 state championships and have 12 playoff <laughs> losses in your career. How about that? That's Dan Koenig shared that stat number with me earlier today. And as he said, we don't put a lot of emphasis on stats in our program, but that's one that's pretty cool. It's so. called job security, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We played a minute and a half here this quarter without anybody scoring. Here's a three ball attempt that bounces around the rim and will not go for Rodebaum. Good secures the rebound. Elizabeth Good's done it all. She's she rebounding. Has, yeah. She's uh, handling the ball at the point. She's uh, scored inside, been to the free throw line, a really impressive player. This is Snipple, and she dribbled the ball off of her leg and lost it out of bounds under defensive pressure. One of those hockey line substitutions for both teams. Bringing in three at a time right here. Mark, is that typical for early in the season for team uh, coaches to play a lot more players, or how does that work? I mean, I, I think especially when you're in the second game in, uh, in three days and you're looking, it's a non-league game, let's look at some kids and look at different situations so we're a little bit more prepared for league play. It's a non-league contest. Why not? So uh, I think that is true. Happens a lot. Here's a three that will go up. That bounces off the back of the rim on the effort by Koenig. And Rose goes to the rim and scores. Hannah Rose's first basket. Well, Ava Unrass just, she made a great a rebound and then uh, made a almost like a behind the back pass, not that she was trying to, but saved it and uh, was able to get those points for Marion Local. Seifering under pressure, gets the ball over mid court. And now trying to get to somebody. Oh, nice pass to Good, and she finishes. That's a really nice pass. Yeah, that pass was from Kiera Seifering, just doing a good job of looking inside and making that backdoor cut was Elizabeth Good. And, Really, Walpock's done a great job of staying close to, to the Flyers today. Back to a two-point game. Here's a pass inside, and Koenig will be fouled and go to the free throw line. Ball with foul goes to Madison Springer. That's Madison's first. Lindsey Koenig talked to Dad earlier today, has uh, committed to play volleyball at Owens Tech once her high school career is over. And she makes her first free throw. She's got five in the game now. 66% free throw shooter. Yeah, Dan was saying, you know, he was hoping she could play well in, in college. And he said, well, you know, she was an all-state player. I said, I think she's going to be just I fine, Dan. I think she's going to be just fine playing volleyball. First of all, she's got a great gene pool. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> so, here's good. And has played volleyball for Anthony Chapel, one of the good coaches in this area. We're going to get an offensive foul. And, boy, going down hard is Chloe Ronebaum. While they deal with Chloe, we're going to take a break. You're watching High School Volley Basketball on WOSN. Our premier sponsor today is Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419 738 8956. Chloe Rodenbaum looked like she caught a knee in the midsection, perhaps lost the win, but she's gone right to the locker room and hopefully she gets back out today. The foul was on good, her second. Skip pass around Kanapke. Here's a lob pass inside. Good job by Madison Springer to tip it out of bounds. Yeah, Madison Springer doing a good job of uh, trying to front Lindsey Koenig there. She's, uh, Koenig's had position the last few times on the floor, but she did a great job of getting her body in position to front that and deny that entry pass. There's another bounce pass inside. This is Hillsman and Rose. There's Unrash trying to find space and not able to. Kanapke finds a Rose on top of the circle. Here's Rose, baseline move, short jumper, off the glass hard. Rose gets her own rebound. And staying with it, got a chance for an and one. That will be Stella Hillsman. Yeah, the, the offensive rebounding by Marion Local has been impressive, and that's one of the things that, you know, Walpock wanted, uh, was trying to not let them do, was giving them those second opportunities, but then giving them the third opportunity as well. Uh, Stella Hillsman, Hillsman did a great job of staying in there and getting that, and now she's going to get a chance to have a three-point play. Hillsman's a 57% free throw shooter on the season, and that's a little bit short. Good battle for the rebound. Good hustle inside, but the ball will go to the red team. 
Six-point lead for the Flyers. They're going to show a little 1-3-1 one, one trap. Quarter gets it over midcourt where she is fouled. Kane's and Kaning picks up her second foul here with 4.15 to go in the quarter. And I was just kind of wondering when yeah. they were going to put on a little bit more pressure, especially trying to trap at midcourt. I know that uh, you know, that's kind of one of the things that they focus on this year is getting out there and, and pressuring. And uh, we've seen them kind of sit back in, a, in more of a man-to-man -man, uh, defense. And now you see them trying to get out there and, and put pressure. Nora Eckstein replaced Katie. You have to wonder if she's not done for the half with a couple of fouls and protect her for half number two. Then. On the held ball, we'll go the other way with it. Rose will find unrest. And the ball got tipped out of bounds under good defensive pressure. Zeligowski. Yeah, Riley Zeligowski doing a really good job up top on Unrast, putting that pressure on her and um, not letting her uh, uh, get her way. Hillsman goes baseline, cross court pass, Kanapke out of the corner. And who hit it out of bounds? Looked like a red shirt did. Rose looking for somebody to pass it to. Finds unrest in the top of the circle to set their offense. And going for the steal was Madison Springer, and she will be called for her second foul. I know she just had a foul on her, but I'm impressed with Madison Springer, especially her play on the defensive end. I got to love a player who takes pride in defense and gets after it, and she's been aggressive down there and really been a force inside. Madison Springer's second foul becomes the seventh team foul, so that'll put Stella Hillsman at the line. And Schnipke came back in to replace Springer with those fouls. The free throw doesn't go. The lead stays at six. Courtney Fullenkamp did a great job there boxing out. Only a sophomore in there and getting a nice rebound for Walpock. Unrest will get called for her second foul. And that will be the seventh team foul. So this time, Elizabeth Good will get to go to the free throw line. She has made all four of her free throws tonight and has six points. Yeah, now's that kind of that critical time of the uh, each half where you get into the double bonus. Both teams being in the, in the bonus right now, I should say. Not the double bonus, but both teams being in the bonus. And you're going to see a lot of free throws here. But who can capitalize and convert on these free throws? Does Elizabeth Good just look like an athlete? She could you probably know? do it all. She yeah, looks like she, she could play softball and run track <laughs> and play volleyball and soccer. And she I'm guessing really every yeah. every coach at Walpaw has been in her ear about playing their sport. Her two free throws becomes point number seven and eight for her. Gets the lead to down to four. Here's Unrass working the lane. Jump shot from the foul line will go for Nora Eckstein. Yeah, Nora Eckstein did a great job of just being patient and taking a wide open shot. And that's what you want to do as a coach. You want your kids to take open looks. And not only did she take it, but she converted. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. And they are hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com and apply today. Here's good. That foul will go against Stella Hillsman, her second. And back to the free throw line goes Elizabeth Good. One on one. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about Elizabeth Good being a good athlete, but there's something to be said about just athletes playing sports, you know? Mm. And, and sometimes I think we, we put way too much emphasis on being the best basketball player. And if you're not a great basketball player, you know, I, I, I've learned in coaching all these years that you need athletes who just understand sports. And maybe you're the fifth or the sixth player on the team. You're still important. You still play a vital role. And 
Um, you know, that's just something that I, I love to see just athletes out here playing sports and competing. John, one of my friends, uh, Greg Mock, of course, a longtime successful coach with the Bath Ladies program, sent me an article this week from the American Journal of Sports Medicine about uh, how your injuries actually decrease if you play a second or a third sport as opposed to that uh, one sport spe specialization some kids are doing. We must be a lot alike because I seen that article and I read it and it made a lot of sense because you know you're using different muscle groups. You're not overusing yep. those muscles in the same repetitive uh, uh, you know, nature in those sports. And um, I think that's something that's changed over the years. People don't play nearly as many sports as they used to. What hasn't changed is a hustle play by Ava Unrest and she knocks down a basket for her fifth and sixth points. And Puts the lead at six, and we're going to get a timeout that will go to Marcy Albers. 2.24 to go in the second. You're watching High School Basketball on WSN. Season 18 of the Sports Report is on. Every Friday night, you can join Patrick Kammerer for a wrap-up of all the basketball coverage in our area. You can do that all season long. That's on Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Coach Albers takes the first, Albert takes the first time out here in our basketball game. Her team trails by six with two minutes to go here in quarter number two. And she gets a turnover, and I'm sure that's not what Coach wanted coming out of a timeout. Well, that's their seventh turnover of the game right now, and they've got a seven to two turnover advantage over Marion Local. That's the one stat you don't want to be in the lead. There's Ava Unrast. He's done a nice job playing point guard today for Coach Best Stribe. In her eighth year at Marion Local. This is Kanapke. Here's Rose from 17 feet. That was a really good offensive set. Back to back, to one side to the other. You didn't see the ball on the floor much, Mark. A lot of passes and, and finally finding the, the open person and that mid-range jumper like you talked about earlier. I love it, you know, not seeing three balls everywhere. It's, it's really refreshing to see uh, these jump shots. Now, Grinnell College took 111 threes in a game this week and never <laughs> attempted a shot inside the arc. <laughs> Here's a three ball that'll go up. Battle for the rebound. There's a good pass inside and a finish by Courtney Follenkamp. Well, and that just came from hustling. I mean, they, you know, they, they work the bar around, but Walpock is hustling and they're getting those open looks because they're they're giving a great effort. Under a minute to go. Here's Rose, just made that jumper a moment ago. Ball's tipped away from unrest, but she secures it again. Unrest, runner to lane and the rebound. Comes down into the hands of Amber Schnipple. Some serious banging going on in the low post last possession. There, there's some physicality yeah. going on in this game, and that just comes from both. And both coaches are aggressively coaching their teams. I love it because they're not only playing aggressive, but they're playing clean too. Quarter, last shot time, Redskins trying to make something happen and really good defense. Shot goes up with the buzzer off the backboard. That was defended really well. Very local will take a six point lead to the break. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. If they're hiring, visit jobs.sriver.com to apply today. Brain Local 23, Wapakoneta 17 at half. Brain Local quarter scores of 11 and 12. They have very balanced scoring. Ava Unrest with six, as does Lindsey Koenig, and four for Stella Hillsman, four for Hannah Rose. On the other side, Wapakoneta quarter scores of nine and eight. They're led in scoring by Elizabeth Good. Mark Schein and John Zerby. We'll see what kind of changes both coaches made at halftime, John. Yeah, you know, looking back on the keys to the game, Marion Local has really done what they wanted to do. They've played the pressure defense. They've really moved the ball really well offensively, and they've rebounded on both ends of the floor. This is why they're in the lead. Walpock, 
the turnovers have been an issue right now. They've got quite a few turnovers, and they're allowing Marion Local to hit the offensive board. So, you know, if they can maybe cheer some of those things up, they're giving a great effort. Um, but this has just been a well-played game, Mark. Elizabeth, Gro uh, Elizabeth Good missed a three-pointer but got her own rebound. Neither team has made a three-point field goal in this game. And nobody got to the three-foul barrier in the opening half either. A couple of girls with two apiece. This is Madison Springer with the basketball. She's going to go baseline, and Hannah Rose tips it away from her. And here's the loose ball scramble, and the arrow favors the Flyers. Yeah, one of the things I think Walpock, they, they've come out with, you know, uh, some new energy here. And uh, it, it, one of the things that I, I've noticed right away for them is that they play hard, you know. And if you play hard, you play aggressive, good things are going to happen. If they can keep that, that uh, momentum and that aggressiveness, I think that they can stay close in this game. Hannah Rose gets a screen at the top of the circle, and she wanted to go up for a jumper and brought it back down with her for a travel. Both these teams have league games coming up before the Christmas holidays. On the 15th, Mary Local will go to St. Henry then a non-league conference uh, contest with Van Wert. That is at Van Wert next Saturday, the 17th. We'll give you Wapak's schedule here in just a moment as the good comes off a screen and goes off glass and it bounces around. Springer battles for the rebound with Koenig and it's loose on the floor. And we're gonna get another held ball. The Redskins come back on Tuesday night. They host Lima Central Catholic. Then they have a league game on the 15th at St. Mary's. A couple more games before Christmas. They have Fort Recovery at home on the 20th and they go to Southview on the 22nd. Here's a rebound. Rose throws it out front. This is Stella Hillsman trying to get to the rim. And tough angle, Stella scores. She did a nice job of getting to the hoop and uh, getting that pass and nice rebound and transition then making the back basket. Six for Stella Hillsman, pushes the lead to eight. Good, slid in the lane and traveled. Looking for the perfect gift for out-of-town sports fans? WSN Broadcast Channel can now be streamed anywhere in the world online, Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up at app.wsn.tv or by downloading the Roku or Apple TV apps. Here's Unrest, goes off glass. It spins out on her and Springer rebounds. It's a nice take, but also a nice job by Madison Springer to be in that position. And not only she could grab the rebound, now she's bringing the ball down the floor. Here's Quarter, Reagan with the basketball. Working against Hannah Rose. Behind the back dribble into the lane, and that's a nice job by Reagan Quarter. Oh, impressive move. Not only uh she took the ball the hole, but just ball handling skills, doing a great job. Her fourth point of the game cuts the lead back to six. Unrest looking inside to Koenig. She and Madison Springer banging away to each other. Rose for three. And check out, and Springer goes on the floor after the ball, and is Let's see what the call is. We got a timeout. Did we get a held ball first? And the answer is no. Wapak gets a timeout. 5.31 to go in the third. You're watching High School Basketball, WOSN. Our premier sponsor is Cook & Son Plumbing & Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us in Facebook or call 419-738-8956. After that scramble on the floor, loose ball, second time out called by Coach Marcy Alberts. That was made possible by Madison Springer. We've talked about her a lot already, but just her effort on the defensive end to try to get that rebound allowed Walpock to, to get that possession. It's good trying to get baseline, and ball's tipped out of bounds, however, by Stella Hillsman. Very local Flyers opening season loss to the Brian basketball team was very good and five wins in a row since that time, including three in conference play. They have wins over Versailles, Delta St. John's, and Minster. Pass inside. Springer gets it blocked by Koenig and the rebound. This is Ava Unrest. She passes it ahead and Hillsman gets pressured on the baseline and still scores. Does a nice job of not only getting out in transition, but then 
uh, rotating underneath the basket and taking a smart shot. Elizabeth Good just wrestled the ball away from a couple of flyers to keep possession. And cross court pass Springer wants to go up and she is fouled. Cross court pass came from Courtney Fullenkamp who was on the floor right now and uh, Courtney is going to get up. In the first half, we kind of seen more of, you know, I wouldn't say clean play, but it was it was aggressive but clean. But right now, you can see the aggressiveness of both teams is starting to get super physical inside, and I think that's it's kind of what both teams want to do. I think they want to play a physical style of basketball. Hannah Rose picked up the foul. Madison Springer missed the free throw. This will bring 33 Reagan quarter back in the game. The 5'10 senior. And Mark, you talked a little bit about the schedule so far. This is such a hard time for basketball teams because you go into the season with the Thanksgiving break and then you turn around not pretty quickly, you have a Christmas break. And, you know, it's just it's hard for teams to get any into any kind of routine, but, you know, b before the new year. The Western Buckeye League boys used to play one game before Christmas. I always thought that they should just back <laughs> one of those up into January for some continuity. Now they play a couple, so I guess uh, that's not an issue anymore. Here's a pass inside, and Reagan Quarter will get her first foul. Well, the season starts so early anymore, especially yeah, for the girls. I mean, I, I feel like they've been playing since late October, but they haven't. But it just, uh, you know, by the time you do get to the new year, it's almost like your season's half over with. Hillsman goes baseline, and that one bounces around. Unrest gets the rebound. Here's Caney with a rebound. Good switch on defense that time as Quarter jumped out to keep Unrest from going to the goal. They have a backup jumper. Good check out inside. Springer really uses her body well. Here's the outlet pass. Can Quarter track it down? She cannot. Madison Springer really good at getting positioning inside. Yeah, she's doing a great job. She's just going to need some help because uh, on that possession alone, Marion Local had two offensive rebounds. And, um, you know, they're going to – they're active. They're active on the offensive boards. They jump and they're really getting after it. So some of those fundamentals like boxing out, one of those things that Hannah Springer's doing is, is she's going to need some help doing that. Madison Springer, excuse me. Flyers trying to get to a double-figure lead if they can score on this possession. And Rose's shot is short. That's a nice check out by Good. Yes, absolutely. And that's what they're going to need. Even long rebounds, you just got to be fundamental on the defensive end, especially on the boards. Good stolen by Kanapke. Here's Jetta going to the rim, and Good fouls her. Nice defensive play. Jetta Kanapke, 5'6", senior. We'll get a couple free throws for her efforts. She did a great job of pressuring out front and then not only getting the steal, but then drawing the foul and giving herself an opportunity here to make a couple free throws. Elizabeth's good third foul. That's the first point of the game for Jenna Kanapke. TV44 and WS Center nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation of any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day, and you can visit WTLW.com. By making both of those free throws, we get to a double figure lead for the first time today. Here's a half court trap. And we're going to get a travel. will be called against Amber Schnippel. Walpock's just having a really tough time this quarter of getting good looks. Uh, the, the pressure that Marion Local is applying is they, they've stepped it up. You know, we talked about halftime adjustments. I think they've even intensified their pressure so far, and it's given Walpock all kinds of trouble on the offensive end. Redskins with just a single basket for two points here in the quarter. There's a pass inside. That was really well done. Eckstein had a good look in the post. And then gets a rebound where she is fouled. That foul goes to Amber Schnippel. And Nora Eckstein's doing a really good job of getting low and getting on in the post there and, and getting open shots. And they haven't fallen yet, but she's been so active that she's been grabbing her own rebounds. And sooner or later, those are going to fall. So lob inside to Koenig. Her shot's a little bit short. And the, the rebound comes to Riley Zeligowski. This is Riley right here. Fort Camp, or Fallen Camp, excuse me, went to the rim and drew a foul on Jenna Kanapke. Jenna's is second. Into the free throw line will go Courtney Fallen Camp. Having trouble 
making field goals, get yourself to the free throw line. Well, and it's, you know, getting open looks, too. If you're not getting a lot of open looks, that's one of the things you can do is, is pump fake and use some fundamentals, take the ball to the hole, and then give yourself an opportunity at the free throw line. Courtney, the 5'10", sophomore, has .5, looking at .6 here. She averages seven a game and six boards. That was a little bit hard. Good check out. So Nora Eckstein could rebound. It's one of the things I've always thought of, Mark, is if you're not a great shooting team, one of the best things you can do is try to draw fouls and get short shots. You There's know? a really good job of Lindsey Koenig positioning up inside and taking a lob pass for points seven and eight to push the lead to 11. Lindsey Koenig just did a good job of getting position and using that backboard. She made it look easy. It's a long three. That missed. And the rebound went to Nora Eckstein, who was fouled by Amber Snipple. Amber has a couple of fouls now. Her team has four and a half as we played five and a half minutes of quarter three. You can see Marion Loke getting out in transition now and breaking that press and getting another opportunity here at the foul line. Lindsey Koenig. Yeah. Knapke pushed the ball down the floor. Koenig posted up and drew a foul. That foul goes to Georgia Schrader. And Koenig, who shoots 66% on the free throw line and made a pair earlier, goes to the free throw line. You know, we're just past halfway here in the third quarter and Walpock's already got five fouls and, you know, it's looking, you know, that they're going to probably be in the bonus here soon. Marion Local is going to have a lot of opportunities for points coming up. Koenig averages 10 points and six boards a game and makes that free throw. She's three out of four there today. Here comes uh, Alex and Dirksen, number 34 in there. Give Lindsey Koenig a break. He had a couple of fouls in the first half, but did not pick up any here in the third quarter. I like what Coach Stribe did there. You know, although Lindsey Koenig did a great job, she always had a word for her, too. Of, hey, this is what you can improve on as well. I love that in coaching. No matter how well you do, you're still something you yeah. can improve on. Good. Lost her dribble and ended up traveling with the basketball. Coach him up, right? Coach them up, you Coach know, and up. no matter what, you can always get better. You can always improve. If you think you've given a great effort, you can probably give a better effort. Unrest looking inside, this time to Dirksen. Good left-handed move by her. I really like that shot. Yeah. Allison Dirksen just made it look easy, and that is not an easy shot, especially to turn to your left, your offhand, and to make a shot like that. Nice play by Allison Dirksen. Pretty good gene pool for Allison. Her cousin just happened to be a pretty good offensive lineman here. <laughs> Ended up at Notre Dame. Yep. And then, uh, let's see, what did the transfer portal? I've forgotten where he went after that. And then Allison just picked up that foul. I remember seeing John Dirksen a few years back and just kind of, and I'm not, you know, a tall man by any means, Mark, but just kind of looking straight up when I came up <laughs> yeah. to him. So. Here is Amber Snipple at the free throw line. Wapak needs some points. That one goes a little hard. I think the big thing right now, Wapak and Ed, is they've got 11 turnovers, and that's just mm -hmm. the, they're trying to offensively to, to, to get open shots, but the pressure that Marion Locals applied has really um, uh, stopped them from, from getting points. Good rebound by Dirksen, surrounded that time. He's going to wrestle the ball loose. Oh, well, we got a foul. What do we got? We got one official called travel, one called foul. Let's see what the call is. It'll be a travel. Basketball will go back to the red team as Elizabeth Good pops up off the bench. She had 10 points in the first half, is scoreless here in quarter three. And you both physical teams, both girls go, or both teams going after the ball on the floor. I thought our officials have done a really good job of uh, calling a fair game today. Good. Just can't get the ball to fall for, and Dirksen wrestled that one free. There's Unrest being chased from behind. Look out, look at Elizabeth Good. You can see that coming. She was uh, perturbed. She missed the last shot, and she was going to go get the basketball. Well, she's a playmaker. She's somebody who's going to try to create. And you can see right now there is a little bit of frustration there. Yep. 
Um, but she's trying to create offense with her defense and just got a little too aggressive. The negative for Elizabeth is that was foul number four, team foul six. So it will be one and ones with the next foul on Redskins. Here's Hannah Rose for three. Rebound came to Georgia Schrader, who pushed it up court and then got called for a travel. JV game today was won by Mary Local, 54-21. I always think it's fun to come over here to Marion Local and play. You know, it's uh, typically we see a, a boys game, you have the stage open, the students in the in the stage, but even the girls game on a Saturday afternoon, well attended, uh, fun place to play. Not a new school by any means, but uh, I kind of like these older gyms. They're just kind of fun to be in. Yeah. You're, you're at a school with uh, at Spencerville. You got a great new facility and, and one that uh, was well needed. <laughs> but all those gyms are kind of cookie cutter gyms. You know, they're all alike now. And I, I agree, the ones like this, a little bit of character to them. And quarter shot went not go for her, but she gets to go to the free throw line. One of the things I always hear, especially over at Spencerville, is in the old gym, which is called the closet, <laughs> yep. you couldn't find a seat. Well, in these new gyms, Mark, they're so big everywhere. You, there's not a bad seat in the house. So I think there's something to be said about the old gyms, the, how hot they are, how it uh, feels very tight. And I know as a player, that's fun to play in those kinds of gyms. Reagan Quarter has .5. And she has made all four of her free throws today. She has six in the game to cut the lead to 12 with half a minute to go in the third. Well, as somebody who has been in the closet, I will take the walk-in closet. <laughs> I do appreciate the older gyms, but uh, that was one that uh, I'm, I'm glad it was replaced. How's that? Here's Dirksen inside. Her shot won't go. Went off of somebody wearing a red jersey's hand, so it'll stay with the Flyers. It's Stella Hillsman to trigger. I've also been in uh, Coldwater's a very, very old gym, and oh, I'll take yeah. their new one, too. Yep. We were just talking last year about St. Mary's and their old gym yeah. at the, and, uh, you know, at the new facility, how different they are. And like you said, when you get a brand new school, you, you kind of get it cookie cutter, but you have fond memories of those old days, but maybe not too fond. Baseline jumper bounces around and will go in for Georgia Schrader at the buzzer. That will cut the lead to 10 as we go to quarter number four. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Scoreboard today is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today with a 11 to 7 third quarter advantage. The lead will be 10 for the Marion Locals. We head to quarter number four. Lindsey Koenig with nine. Stella Hillsman has eight to lead the Flyers. 10 for Elizabeth Good and six for Reagan Quarter. And basketball will go to the Flyers to start quarter number four. And Walpock struggled to score that quarter, and they're going to have to get out here and play some aggressive defense to create some offense if they're going to want to stay in this game. Looking inside, there's a pass. Good post up inside by Hillsman, and she's fouled from behind. Be free throw time. Looked like Hannah Prine was in there trying to get position and just overreached a little bit. And it's going to allow Marion Local to, to go to the free throw line here. And we talked about it just a few minutes ago about how uh, Marion Local is going to get a lot of opportunities from the free throw line because now Walpock's in the bonus. Hillsman has eight points in the game. She is 0 for 2 from the foul line today, but shoots 57% on the year and made that one. Point nine, trying to become the double figure scorer, which would be the first one for the Flyers today. Averages 5.8 points per game on the season. Springer tracks it down in a corner. And we're going to get an intentional foul that's going to go against Madison Springer. Well, and that's, a, that's a tough call because I think Madison Springer's just been aggressive. And she's, uh, she's been aggressive on the defensive end, grabbing rebounds. And that's an opportunity there where, you know, as a coach, you teach them that. You teach them to, you know, square it with the ball and to not necessarily use your elbows, but also to be strong with the basketball. And it looked like that's what she was doing there. But 
Maybe caught an elbow there, too. Yeah, the, 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 when that elbow comes out like that, it, it's an automatic call. And sometimes, like you say, you're, you're just protecting yourself and the ball. But the, that was the call. And so the first free throw is missed by Stella Hillsman. She'll get another opportunity. And you understand from an official yep. standpoint, they want to keep players safe. They want to you know, keep kids from uh, getting the game out of hand. So it's a good call on the official's part. That's, that is correct. And now with 10 points in the game for Stella Hillsman, her team leads by 12, 19 seconds into the fourth quarter. And of course, because of the intentional foul, they get the basketball out of bounds. At what's called the point of interruption, right where that particular foul occurred. And that's a push from behind that will go against. Springer got a, a foul right there. That was off ball. I did not see it, but she picks up foul four. Well, one of the things that you see in these games, is especially with this aggressive kind of play, is that you're going to have fouls. I mean, it's just, I think that's just the part of it. You know, and as a coach, I, I think. You don't necessarily want to have too many fouls, but I think you do want to see some fouls because if you're not if you're not playing aggressive, then you're probably not making an impact. Yeah, that foul right there will go against Stella Hillsman, her third. It's kind of like that baseball pitcher always throws the ball over the plate. You know, every <laughs> once in a while, got to be a little bit wild with it. Keep That's them right. honest. That's right. Well, and I think as an official, they they're letting them play. I mean, they yeah. as much as they possibly can, can they've let them play, but. Um, any physical style of play is going to call for some fouls. Pass to the corner to Kara Seifring. She goes into the lane. Her little shot rolls in for her across the lane. That's Stella, uh, Kara's first basket of the day. Did a nice job of attacking the basket, and I think that's something that they just need to do. And uh, they, They've tried to get open looks, but just try to attack the basket. Koenig with a nice loop move in the low post. She posted up very well that time. She's got 11 in the game. Unless they get her some backside help, I'm not sure they can stop that because Lindsey Koenig's just done a good job of getting in position, and she's money from that spot. Here's Quarter, and she gets the basketball stolen from her by Stella Hillsman. Stella's headed down the floor and goes off glass. Nope, but she will be fouled by Hannah Pryde. Well, this is going to be the opportunity here now when you're in the double bonus. I know this mm. is a shooting foul, but they're in the double bonus. They're going to get a lot of foul shots. And, you know, I, I think as a coach, you know, you, you, you try to tell your players how important foul shots, shots are. Um, it can be a, a game killer for some teams when you foul and the other teams are going to the foul line. It also can be a strategy if you know the team is not a very good free throw shooting team. If you're going to foul and put them to the foul line um, and they can't hit free throws, uh, you can get yourself back into the game. The ball gets tipped out of bounds. It will be red basketball. Stella Hillsman has shot nine free throws today. Showing active players get to the foul line, don't they? They sure do. And uh, that's uh, Stella Hillsman has been active, you know, inside. I mean, that's the thing that she's, she's driven the ball um, to the hoop. She's been in transition. She's really given herself a lot of opportunities to score today. So one three one trap we're looking at right here. See how the Redskins handle this. Good, throws it into the corner and a good steal. Nice play by Unrast and then she is fouled by Reagan Quarter. And back to the free throw line we will go. I love that pressure. It reminds me of a zone coverage in football. And uh, just because you try to make those kinds of passes, you don't initially see a defender come across until you actually are throwing the ball and it's too late at that point. Free throw good. Would you kindly go down to Ohio State and ask them to put a safety in the middle of the field when they play Georgia? <laughs> Listen, if they could put nine safeties in the middle yeah. of the field, I would like them to do that. <laughs> makes both free throws, point seven and eight for Ava Unrest. That makes the lead the largest today at 15. Here's Quarter, throws it ahead. There's Unrest with hands active again. And we get a travel move as Kiara Seifring was trying to get to the rim. Well, and I think the Walpock faithful are getting a little frustrated with the turnovers and the. Uh, well, but but the reality is is that uh, they're playing hard and those things are going to happen. And I know Coach Alberts here has been talking to the officials about uh, you know a lot of the fouls being called. She got a warning from Aza Donaldson, and there's a travel going the other way. 
Well, speaking of officials, these guys have done a good job. We talked yeah. about earlier. Asa Donaldson, uh, he's one that I just know him pretty well. It does a great job. These guys, I, I think, have done a really good job this afternoon in keeping this game moving in a highly physical game. And without uh, knowing this for a fact, I will bet they did a game last night and probably won, had one tonight. Here's a good rebound effort, a good follow-up. I really like that play by Courtney Fallencamp. Well, and sooner or later, that aggressiveness is going to—it's going to happen. It's—it's it's going to be a uh, uh, good things are going to happen when you play hard. As soon as the ball went in the basket, Coach Alberts called timeout. 5:49 to go. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. Our premier sponsor is Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. Well, Coach has burned her third time out. I think she's got a plan now for the final 549. Well, she's going to have to have one, you know, to use those, those timeouts. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I think that uh, she's uh, really trying to get her team uh, focused on what they need to do, and especially if you're a young team, it's, it's okay to use those timeouts. You have them, you might as well use them. That ball's blocked out of bounds by a quarter as she came up into pressure. Let's see if they stay with that. They're gonna go to a 1 3 1 half court trap here. Cross court pass, and work because they got a rebound by Elizabeth Good. Elizabeth's not scored in the second half after having 10 in the opening half. And Eight of those to the free throw line. Kind of see why they called that timeout to mm. transition that defense into that to that 1-3-1 uh, one, one, and it seemed to, you know, fool Marion Local just a little bit enough to get a get a possession there. Sometimes you press for steal, sometimes you press for tempo and that That's time right. they got the tempo they wanted. Got a rebound, headed the other way. Held ball also favored Redskins. There's quarter in the corner. She goes in the lane, gets a shot that rebounded for a moment by Kira Seifring, but lost it out of bounds. Marin Local just does a very good job of being fundamental wherever they're at. You know, even if it's defensively, they're doing a good job. There's Dirksen off to a good pass, and she got pushed. Well, the push was actually off ball, and they got Elizabeth Good who pushed the passer. And that will be Elizabeth Good's fifth foul, and she will head to the bench. Yeah, and you know, you don't see that often, Mark, where they're going to call a, a foul. You know, sometimes it's typically it's an illegal screen, or, um, but uh, you don't necessarily see a, a foul on the passer. But I, I think, I think they're, the, the call is, is correct. I mean, there's, it was a f transition play, and she was trying to make uh, a play on the ball, and she just had to get to the passer to get to the ball. Jenna Kanapke missed the opening free throw. She is three for uh, two for three at the free throw line, trying to get to three for four today. But it does hurt Walpock by losing Elizabeth Good. I mean, she's, yeah. like we said earlier, she's their, one of their most athletic players and kind of the centerpiece of their offense and defense. So they're going to have to have some of their younger ones step up here. That puts Reagan Quarter at the point guard position. She was just fouled, and his team foul six. And the foul will go to Hannah Rose. And they're going to have to find some other scores as, as well. You know, I know that um, Elizabeth Good hadn't really scored much in the third quarter there, but uh, they're going to find some offense in other places. Here's Hannah Rose to the basket where she missed under pressure from Springer. Quarter's got a man out of the head of the pack and headed to the rim with a finish and is Riley Zeligowski, her first basket. Those Good. transition points are huge right now. They're going to need the, you know, struggling running sets on offense. Those transition points are going to be important. Cuts the lead to 12 with four and a half to go. Kanapke had it tipped out of bounds. You know, on a Saturday afternoon, Mark, you kind of expect a nice, calm, just well-played, easy game. Everybody kind of sit back with their popcorn. None of that. Everybody's no. pretty into the game. <laughs> Coaches are into it. It's getting pretty intense. Here's a move to the goal that time by Ava Unrest, and she will get to go to the free throw line. Two, 
it's always kind of fun too for girls games because you know the gyms typically are not as full so you know as a fan you can get your point across you know yep. officials will hear you and uh, we have some uh, you know some pretty passionate people here this will be the 13th free throw of this quarter for the Flyers and if Ava makes this she will become a double figure scorer which she does with 10 she's made all four of her free throws today And she has a real bright future, only being a sophomore, um, doing a lot of great things offensively and defensively, creating turnovers and, and making plays. Hillsman got the steal as she headed up the sideline. She got pushed out of bounds by Kira Seifring. And back to the free throw line, we will go. You know, and I don't, I don't keep, you know, making this point, and I hope I'm not saying it too much, but the turnovers have been a big deal mm -hmm. right now. You know, Walpock 16 turnovers to Marion Locals three. Um, it's it's tough to, to really have a lead when you're there's that big of a difference in the turnovers. And then those turnovers have been because of a very pressured defense is coming out of the team wearing white jerseys today. Not like you're just sloppy with a the basketball. No, these are these not. are forced things. 16 point lead. Flyers average 43 points per game. They're at 46 right now, halfway through the fourth quarter. Here's unrest. Anna Rose looks inside to Dirksen. Somebody's been teaching those young ladies how to post up. I tell you, they just get position. And you know, I give them credit for getting them the ball. A lot of times mm -hmm. you'll see players in position, they just won't get them the ball, but those entry passes have been perfect and then they're finishing at the basket as well. Uh, as, a, as an old post player, John, with an emphasis on old, I appreciate that guy's <laughs> going to low post now because nobody does anymore. You know, I was thinking of this not too long ago. We we're talking about three pointers and the importance of the game. I remember, uh, you, you know, you being a former WBL coach, the name Wooly from oh, Elida. Yeah. We knew at, at in third grade the Woolies <laughs> were going to play basketball because of their height. And anymore, it's so driven by three pointers and the outside game that it's just changed the game so much. Courtney Fallenkamp was attempting to secure the rebound when she was fouled. So we'll walk the other end and shoot free throws at the other end. That foul will go to Allison Dirksen. That's Allison's third. And it becomes one and one time for Courtney Fullenkamp. She's got seven points in the game. I thought Courtney Fullenkamp's really played a good game. She's been active. She's been aggressive. Only a sophomore um, doing a lot of really good things. And she's only going to get better as the season goes on. Snaps off a free throw and makes that one. That's point eight. If you're this Wapak team, you, you know, you have a changing coach and a lot of change in players and a lot of young players. I've seen a lot of good things out of them today. I mean, they, they've they really uh, done a nice job, and their record may not show it right now, but they, they have a bright future this season. St. Mary's, Ottawa, Glendorf, and Bath High School, probably the three teams at the top of the Western Buckeye League when this season comes to an end. There's a nice move with the left hand by Dirksen. She's got seven. She's excited about it. Yeah, too. She's, as she's, well she should be. Yeah, she's pretty pumped, and uh, like you said, she should be. She's done a great job inside. What's been a relatively close basketball game throughout all of a sudden has become a 19-point game. And it doesn't feel like a 19-point game. Doesn't, it doesn't, no. It, it really feels like Walpock's still there, that they're in striking distance, although they're not. But um, I think that just goes back to that aggressiveness that Marion Local's uh, been, been putting on Walpock and, and been able to separate at this point of the game where now that 19-point lead, is they're in full command. Dirksen got foul number four, and that free throw does not go that time for Fallenkamp. Well, to your point, John, Wap uh, Mary Local won the open quarter 11-9. They won the second quarter 12-8. They won the third quarter 11-7. So they've all been close until we've gotten here to the last few minutes. I think a lot of those separations have been free throws, too. I mean, just mm. being at the free throw line, getting to the free throw line, and then converting, making those points. This quarter so far has been a 16-7 quarter in favor of the Flyers. So they've won every quarter, but the first three were relatively close as they back it up under two minutes to go. It's 
some subs waiting at the bench the next time we get a dead ball situation. That's a good time to get some, some kids in that maybe haven't been in and some time for some, maybe some JV kids who are sitting some varsity time and allowing them to get an extra quarter here and a little bit extra playing time. Kanapke looked inside but couldn't find unrest and so they bring it back out. Audrey Wynn is in the basketball game. She wears number 21. Here comes number 35. That's Brooke Wilker. Uh, number 32, Allie Everman is in the game as well. And let's see if we can pick up all the new red jerseys. Looks like Aubrey Miller, who wears 32. Number three is Audrey Welsh. She is in the basketball game as well. Uh, we've got Hannah Prine so far. We've got Amber Schnipple so far. And we've got uh, Georgia Schrader. So who else just checked in? Number 20, that would be Natalie Evers came in. She's a 5'8 sophomore. I think we got all the new bodies in, I think. <laughs> you did a good job of getting well, all those names, Mark. Trying to. <laughs> Keep the mamas happy when <laughs> their daughter's name called. So you're keeping the dads happy, that's well. for sure. <laughs> uh, trying to get inside. That time was Welsh, the freshman. Here's a move to the goal and an and one opportunity for Amber Snipple. Yeah, Amber Snipple getting her opportunity here. She's a senior guard getting some uh, opportunity to make a play here. And she does a good job of converting there and now getting to the foul line. Her first basket of the game. She's got a chance for a three point play. 63 seconds to go in this one. And you looking at Walpock here, you know, like you said, WBL always strong in girls basketball. It's one of the things that, you know, I, I even enjoy following girls basketball, you know, in the WBL because of, of Bath and the OGs and uh, the Walpawks for years, you know. Um, so it's going to be a fun season as well again this year. And a Schneider wears number 35 for the Redskins is in basketball game as well. Both coaches have a chance to get a lot of people into this one. Good move on. Here's a 19 feet shot, but stand on the line. Needed an extra nine inches for a three, but Evers gets a basket. We've not had a three point field goal today. Isn't that refreshing? Yeah. I mean, it's not like they've, it, it, they've there's been a few free, uh, three point shots, but not, not many, you know. Here's one right here, and now we got one. <laughs> How about that? Hannah Schneider pops off the bench and nails our first three of the game. I think she heard you up here, Mark. Uh, I think, I think so. that was a challenge on, on her is, part. Is that the uh, the reverse jinx? You know, <laughs> yes. we, we talk people out of free throws who made 10 in a row, and we just, we just got a, a good three-point field goal attempt. Congratulations. <laughs> this is going to run down. And that will bring this one to an end. Mary Local Flyers will take a 52-36 victory today. That will move them to 6-1. And, and they are 3-0 in the conference, in the Midwest Athletic Conference, with a game coming up at St. Henry this week. Wapakoneta will fall to two wins and four losses. They are 1-1 one one in the Western Buckeye League. And they have LCC on Tuesday. They go to St. Mary's then coming up on next Thursday. Ten points for Elizabeth Good. Looks like eight points for Courtney Fullenkamp on the other side. Looks like we got about 13 for Estella Hillsman. And we have 11 for Lindsey Koenig and lots of other balance. Pretty good effort overall, John, for the uh, the Flyers to get a 16-point win here at home. Yeah, and you know, after playing on Thursday night, you know, those Saturday games just a couple days later, you got to challenge that, that tiredness. And they did a good job. Pressure defense was the big thing. You know, they just created so much on their defense. We talked about it a lot during the game. But... Uh, bright future and uh, really a good season in store for the Flyers coming up. I want to thank our sponsors today. Our scoreboard sponsor has been Charles River in the Spencerville. Our premier sponsor today has been Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating. Met with the athletic director, Mr. Dan Koenig. He helped both of us out putting this particular game together. We thank our crew. That would be Stephen McNeil and Kelsey Beimer, who are here in the gym with us today. And back at the station, Megan Sherrick will edit this one together. Marine Local Flyers get win number six in a row. They're going to 6-1 on the season. It's a 52-36 win over the Wapakoneta Redskins. For John Zerby, this is Mark Shine. You've been watching High School Basketball on WOSN.